Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fish Tank. I'm Badis Fish Eddie, and today we've got some exciting news from Minion Masters. Now, if you've been paying attention, there's been a blog post from the Beta Dwarf, the Minion Masters developers, telling us a little bit about what's coming up in the new expansion. So we're going to find out and go through that today. Of course, it's on their uh, blog site. If you want to check it out for yourself, you can do. So the new patch is going to call, be called Minion Masters Torment. And as we can see here, it's going to be all around Voidborn. Voidborn, one of the coolest factions in the game. We can see there we've got Volko, the Voidborn Master. We've got Magma Court, the Voidborn Arena. And we've got some Voidborn Minions and Voidborn Spells. Now, remember the way the expansions work with Minion Masters is that they're going to last for three months. And it's going to be broken down into monthly seasons. So let's find out a little bit more about what we can expect in this upcoming um, update. Okay, so as per their blog, there's a couple of things to go through, and we'll go through them one at a time here. So the first thing to note is there's going to be a slight delay on when this patch launches. Now, the patches normally launch on the first Thursday of the month, but this one is going to be a week later. So this is going to be launching on Thursday, October the 13th. Um, just to give them an, a bit of extra time with regards to polishing some of the new features that we'll go through very shortly. Additionally, the devs did mention that there could be some marketing opportunities that they could potentially take advantage of by delaying this. So that's great to see. So this is going to be version 1.40. And one of the big updates is going to be an update to Mayhem. Now, if you're not familiar with the Mayhem mode, that's a mode where basically you lock in your deck and you play against other players and you try to get 12 wins before you get three losses. The more wins you get, the more rewards you get. But of course, Mayhem's a little bit different from regular play in so much as there's a different rule set. So we've seen many different Mayhems, very, very different crazy sort of uh, rules and uh, restrictions. And we're going to see some more. Now, one of the major issues with Bayhem is it was probably the least played mode in the game. So Mayhem, you can do solo and you can do pre-mates. And pre-mates, Mayhem had some very long queues simply because not many people played it. So the devs are trying to encourage more people to get involved with a very fun part of the game. I've started playing Mayhem more recently and I'm excited to see these changes. So what have they done to breathe some life, inject some love, as they say here, into the Mayhems? Well, there's a bunch of new Mayhems and I'm excited to find out about them. One of my biggest issues with mayhem is some of the modes had um, certain rules that meant that specific cards were really a must and you'll find when you played it everyone kind of had very very similar decks so it'd be nice to see if we have some different more uh, flexible mayhem rules that allow some more interesting deck building to take place okay so there's going to be six new mayhems to be added. So here's three to find out a little bit more about. Masters of Misadventure. Start your mayhem run by drafting among three random masters out of the Adventure Masters pool. Now, if you tried the Adventures mode, you will know that uh, Adventures is where you or you and a, a friend will play against the computer. And that's the PVE, player versus environment, part of the game. And one thing you'll notice if you play that mode is there's lots and lots of different masters masters that are not available in normal ranked mode so this is going to give you a chance to get a hold of some of those masters and try them out against other players so that's masters of misadventure also um dragon not drag dragon's not the right word but uh, building on the adventures experience we're going to have relics of old which allow you to draft three uh, among three adventure relics twice uh, and again, if you've tried out the adventures part of the game, you'll know that the relics are things that you unlock as you go through that empower your cards, empower your deck, do certain things. So that's going to be very interesting to see what sort of relics are available and see how they stack up in a PvP as opposed to a PvE environment. And the third one we're going to find out about here is Faction Wars. You're going to get a 20% mana bonus if your entire deck is of the same faction. So, for example, factions are things like Voidborn or Slither, things like that. Now, there's going to be some more as well. We're not going to find out all about them. Uh, so there's one there's one's going to be called Jinxed, Holograms and Boss Battle. So we'll find out more about those um, hopefully in the future. 
Now, as well as having a bunch of new Mayhems, and just to confirm, the way Mayhems have worked in the past, and I assume the way they're going to continue to work, is that a Mayhem is ac active for three days. So we'll see if that's the case as we move forward. So it's active for three days, and then it switches to a different one. So fairly regularly, there's a different um, event and some more rewards to get into. And speaking of rewards, the reward table has been updated. So two things to take away here. Firstly, the rewards are far more generous in terms of the in-game content that you can get. So all the way up to some Supreme cards and some Legendary cards. Now, the offshoot of that is the Ruby reward has been removed. So previously, you could get a small amount of rubies. That has been re removed. So I'm sure some people will have some things to say about that. Um, but if you're looking for in-game content, there's some great rewards to be gained now from it. Also, they've added some Mayhem leaderboards. So you can compete against others to have the highest amount of wins versus the fewest losses. So that would be interesting to see. Do we have some players that are very, very good Mayhem players? Let's find out. Um, and also, that allows you to see decks that people are using. Obviously, the offshoot of showing people's decks is that can cause people to just utilize decks that are very strong and then you get into the situation we had before where everyone uses the same deck for a specific mayhem but we'll see how that works out and also a retry function has been added so even if you run out of your lives if you lose three times you can retry but it will be for a fee um, and my sources tell me that fee is going to be 100 rubies now as well as all of the new mayhems that have been added some of the previous Mayhems that were the least popular ones have been removed. So Malshar's uh, Malicious Malediction, where everything was stealthed. Fluctuations, where your cards had their mana cost randomly changed. Explosive Minions, where everything exploded when it dies. And Killing Floor, which is the bottom bridge always burning. Those have been removed, at least for now. And one of the key changes here is that Mayhem is a dish best served in teams say the devs but that's not just pre-made teams that can just, that's going to be random teams as well so solo mayhems are on a, a hiatus at least for now and as mentioned earlier the 2v2 mayhem had some very very long queue times so this change here is also designed to hopefully reduce those queue times for everyone getting involved in mayhem but as always, feedback is important. So there's some big changes here to the Mayhem game mode. Please let the devs know what you think of the changes based on what you've read. And also, once you get into the game, when it's live in October, check it out. Give the feedback. Uh, there's, if you click on the, the menu icon in the game, you can get there's a feedback form there. You can also go to the Discord and various other ways to give your feedback. Okay, so as with all expansions, we're going to have some new cards so we've got a couple of new cards joining here we've got Korgath Tyrant of the Gorok and we've got Cowardly Imps so we're not going to find out exactly what these guys do but we're going to get an idea based on the artwork and we're going to look at one of the keywords that this expansion introduces so here we see huge mythic minion we'll see a little later mythic minion has what looks like some kind of axe on a chain so it'd be interesting to see how he wields that what sort of power that gives him and then the second new card the cowardly imps um so looking kind of like blood imps looks like they've got a crossbow so assuming they're ranged cowardly maybe some kind of fear mechanic in there so those that's the artwork that we've seen of the new cards but what about the new keyword that they're introducing? Okay, well, Korgath, as they mention here, is going to be a 10 mana hammer wielding mythic. And the keyword that he brings is invoke. So we're not sure yet how this keyword is going to be implemented, but we know what it's going to do. And that's going to be, it's going to replace a Voidborn card in your hand with a random Voidborn card that costs one more mana until played keeps its current cost now if you read that you could come up with a few different uh, interpretations of how that works but i will tell you exactly how it works so for example imagine you have a four mana voidborn card in your hand so let's say a fire imp and that gets invoked 
what that's going to do is that's going to replace your four mana card with a random four plus one. So here it says costs one more. So it's going to replace it with a random five mana Voidborn card. Uh, so for example, your Flame Imp is going to be replaced by a Succubus, but it's going to keep its current cost. So your four mana card has become a five mana card, but it only costs you four mana. So the idea of the Invoke is you're getting more bang for your mana. And of course, you can potentially invoke multiple cards. And if I remember correctly from the testing, you can also invoke an already invoked card. So your four mana card could become a five mana card, costing four mana um, and, and so forth. We'll see how that works out, but that seems like a very interesting mechanic. Um, so we, we we know what the skill does, but we don't quite know how it's going to be implemented. Is it going to be when he kills something, when he hits something, when he spawns? We don't know, but we'll find out um, as we lead up to the, the new expansion. Now, with all of the balance changes, um, with all the patches, we're always going to have balance changes. And if you're part of the PTR, the test realm, you will have been able to get your hands on a version of the game with some of these changes and you will have been able to see what you think, give your feedback. So I encourage you, if you haven't yet, please consider getting involved in that. Go to the Mini Masters Discord, look at the PTR section on the left, the public PTR, there'll be an announcement. It'll tell you when it's available, it'll tell you how to get involved. You can test out the new cards, you can test out the proposed balance changes and give your feedback. And of course the devs can use that information uh, with regards to changing things if necessary, balancing things where required. So a couple of the balance changes here. There's a lot of balance changes coming, but we've got a few to go through and look at the interesting ones. So Glen's Brew. So Glen's Brew is quite a uh, divisive spell at the moment. It's very specific in its utility. So you'll find it on a Reckonator, on a Setsu, on a Battle Monkey, um, on a Fergus. High HP, sorry, high DPS units. You'll throw Glen's Brew on, especially if they do AoE, anything like that, you can get a lot of extra value from Glen's Brew. Uh, but it's also really frustrating uh, because it's very difficult to deal with some of these units, especially if you know they've got a Glen's Brew in their hand. You've got a Fergus about to die on your face. Do you commit to try to kill it? Do you let your masters try and kill it? They're probably going to Glensbrew it. Everything's going to die. It's going to be a nightmare. Same with Setsu. So Glensbrew has been tweaked to make it a bit more manageable and a bit more uh, less niche. So what is it going to do in the change? Well, it's going to give a friendly minion Frozen. So remember, Frozen reduces damage by 50% whilst it's frozen, which I believe is five seconds. Um, and of course, while it's frozen, it cannot attack. It's going to heal for 200 over the duration. So it's going to freeze something, reducing its incoming damage, and it's going to heal it. But of course, remember, frozen units can't attack. And then it says here, if it's Stout Heart, it gains Revelry. I'm not exactly sure what that means. It gains Revelry as opposed to triggers its Revelry. Um, but it'd be interesting to see exactly how that works out. Let me know in the comments what you think that could potentially mean. Now we've got a, a master change to King Puff. King Puff, a very strong master, especially at perk three, but we're gonna be looking at some changes to his perk two. So currently perk two, you'll get a rage puff and a shield puff that will appear on your side of the arena. You can pick it up and get the benefit. Now what's gonna change is that those buffs are gonna still exist, but instead of them always being a rage or a shield, there's gonna be two out of a potential five buffs. So rage and shield will ex exist um, alongside spirits, knights, and spells. So um, you're going to get two out of the five. And remember, these will pop up when the king's birthday is celebrated. So you'll be able to give the gift of rage, the gift of shields, the gift of spirits, the gift of knights, which is two night puffs, or the gift of spells, a random one use two mana spell to your hand. So a bit more variety there. Um, one of the things you won't be able to guarantee now is you won't be able to guarantee that rage that you could always kind of could before. So um, probably makes King Puff a little bit more interesting to use, but maybe a, a nerf probably overall. Okay, now a change to Commander Azali. Now, Commander Azali, she was very, very strong in the meta for a while and received 
some sizable nerfs, which kind of took her out of the meta. So that's going to be changed a little bit. So um, her cost is being reduced from 9 to 7, her health and her DPS are being scaled down as appropriate. But also her ability is being limited. Now, one of the, the keys uh, to her ability is when you take a bridge, when she's on the field and not stunned, she will grant shields. Now, back in the day, she used to grant shields to everything that was on the ground and in the air. Then that was restricted to just on the ground. Now it's been scaled back a little further. So it's only going to shield the 10 nearest friendly ground minions. I'm not exactly sure what happens if the minions around her already have a shield. Will she kind of double shield them and waste the shield on it? Or will she shield stuff uh, further away? Not sure. Let me Again, let me know what you think, how that's going to work out. We'll see that when we get our hands to test Command Rosali in the, the new patch. So that's just a taste of the balance changes. Now remember, as mentioned before, please consider getting involved in the PTR. We want you to join the public PTR, say the devs, and let your voice be heard. So join the Discord, check out the PTR section, get involved. It's real easy. It tells you exactly how to do it. Check it out, give your feedback, and help make Minion Masters even more, more awesome. Right, so we know that the Minion Masters patch is going to be called the Torment, the Torment Expansion. And as with all expansions, we're going to get a free DLC. So the Torment DLC is going to be free from the 14th to the 21st of October. Additionally, there's going to be a 25% discount on the All Masters and Premium DLCs in the same period. So the All Masters will give you uh, access to all the Masters, current and future. <clears throat> and of course, if you've got some of the Masters already, regardless of how you've achieved them, how you've acquired them, you will get... Uh, Ruby refund. The premium DLC gives you extra win bonus, XP, gold, all sorts of cool stuff, some deck slots as well, I think. So there's some cool stuff to check that out. And the last thing we see here is a new little emote. Little Voidborn, scared imp, like the look of that little chap. Okay, so those are the changes to. Uh, to the mayhem some balance changes that we briefly looked through a couple of the new cards a new keyword a lot of stuff coming in the mini masters torment expansion room remember it's delayed a little bit but we'll look forward to seeing that in october let me know in the comments if you will what do you think about the new mayhem is mayhem a mode that you play a lot and you're excited to get involved is mayhem a mode you didn't even know existed and now you want to get involved in and try it out uh, let me know and I'll look forward to having a discussion there and wherever we meet. Okay, guys, my name's Bad as a Fish 80. I'm signing out. Take care. See you again soon here in the fish tank.